Good evening, viewers, and welcome to the Games Master Christmas Special. Hit it, guys! Yes, Christmas brings many things to mind. The sight of snow falling on a forest. The sight of children and the joy in their eyes as they're opening their presents. And the sight of two girls dancing in fake animal skin costumes in front of a three-piece steel calypso band. On tonight's show, Emma Harrison is quite literally up the creek without a paddle in Rapid River. But we begin with an event called you think that this is hard, just wait till you hit puberty. Yes, it's Christmas. And what better way to get into the spirit of things than a challenge on the famously hard Crash Bandicoot 2 on the PlayStation. In order to claim his golden trophy, my intrepid contestant must be made a series of rampaging polar bears and get to the end of the level without losing a life. In the second half of the level, Crash will be required to pitch a lift with a baby polar bear, a slippery beast of the best of times. Only the most focused of nine will be able to steer the furry infant from the clutches of its pathological parent. Our challenger for this event has been pestering us for nearly a decade, saying that he is the finest games player of his generation. Please welcome Mr. Alan Frost. Welcome to the show, Alan. Hiya. Right, Alan, how old are you? Six. Six, and so you go to school. What, uh, who's your favourite teacher? Miss Lynch. Why do you like Miss Lynch? She's like the other teacher, because the other teacher's like tell you to tidy up the classroom when the teacher does it. But Miss Lynch says you can leave the classroom in a big mess, I don't care. She does it. She tidies it up. But I think Miss Lynch, you haven't quite got the idea of that power structure uh, yet though. Now when you're not at school and you play games, you know that you're very good at video games. What, what's your other favourite toys? Mm, Star Wars. Star Wars figures. How many Star Wars figures have you got? One. One? Which one's that? Luke. Luke Skywalker. Is that your favourite toy in the whole world? Yeah. Well, Alan, if you do our challenge, we're going to give you a Christmas present. If you don't, I'm going to keep the Christmas present, and you're not going to get anything. Yep. While we rush out then and find the cheapest thing we can possibly buy to stick in this box for young Alan, let's take a look at today's news. <laughs> Essex last week, when the nation's 13th Sega Park opened its doors on Friday. Despite its name, the park has no trees or grass in sight, concentrating instead on over 50 arcade machines and a general atmosphere of frivolity. Indeed, Sega are hoping that Harlow Sega Park and others like it will usher in a new era in which the arcade is seen as a place of family fun, rather than the dingy haunt of sociopaths and kids bunking off school. Today, the UK's first 3D IMAX cinema opens in London. As well as having a screen seven stories high, the new cinema gives an extra dimension by using special LCD headsets, which by flashing open and closed extremely fast, present a slightly different picture to each eye. The first 3D title on show is called Across the Sea of Time, a story set in the past and present of New York City. Oh dear, we can only hope that future titles will feature our preferred diet of gratuitous violence, gigantic spaceships, attractive ladies and pointless explosions. Six-year-old Alan Frost is about to show the world why he is the finest game player of his generation on a Crash Bandicoot 2. Helping me describe the action uh, is the ever-youthful Kirk Ewan. Kirk, it's Christmas time. What are you hoping to find in your sack? <laughs> uh, well, I, uh, I very rarely find anything in my sack, let's be honest. Uh, I'm usually, uh, I find it a very barren place indeed. And so that's what I'll be expecting for Christmas, same as usual, nothing. That's uh, right. Now, uh, Alan, though, if he does a challenge, We'll get uh, this fine present, which he has no idea what it is yet, and it'll be a really nice surprise, only if he gets it. If you don't get it, Alan, if you don't win it, you don't get the present, you know that. Good girl. <laughs> <laughs> okay, any tips for Alan? 
Uh, well, this is, of course, a fabulous-looking Crash Bandicoot 2. For fans of the original, this is kind of like a cross between the, the Boulder Challenge and the Pig Challenge from yeah. the original game. Uh, I mean, the basis, as you, as you know, if you uh, were a fan of the original game, just keep running away from the things uh, and avoid all the traps laid along the course. It's a running, jumping, keep going type it's challenge. It's very tough as well. Uh, it's a tough challenge, yeah, especially for uh, a very, yeah. very short, short guy like that. Okay, there is no time, time limit on this. The level is so tough that he can take as long as he likes, but of course, he'll have to get moving, otherwise the boulder will crush him from behind, the polar bear, rather, will crush him from behind, step <laughs> back and take the previous crash bandicoot step. Best of luck, Alan. <laughs> He's cool. Best of luck. <laughs> Off you go. Okay, we'll look at the screen. Alan's starting already. He's stopping a bit. Please forward, Alan. That's a very good start. Where's this? There's a massive polar bear there, Kurt. massive polar bear, right? He's going to just keep coming. There's another jump coming up here. If he can just clear over this one now, he's going to avoid these boxes right in front. They've got nitro inside. They would kill him instantly, which he's done. Avoided the electric fence there. The polar bear ever advancing, ever advancing. He's done fantastically well. He's over that fence. Very well. It's an exceptional display from the young six year old Alan Fortier. There's a turtle, but it's been spun ahead. The polar bear's getting on him. It was a gecko. Yeah, you know that turtle is my gecko. I've never met a gecko in my life, actually. You didn't mind about in Glasgow. <laughs> uh, oh, it's, it's the tag team. It's the second polar bear now, Kurt. Once again, it's the second polar bear. He's out the, out the cage and he's on the loose. He's avoiding the mines extremely well. He got a push there when he hit that thing. And it just keeps going, keeps going the way he is. Everything's going to be absolutely dandy. I am stunned. I've never seen a display like this from people oh. five times a day. You're always in a head. Come on, Alan. You can do it. He spins away the other gecko. Gecko. That big, massive, huge polar bear, so how near is he to the end of the level, Kurt? Well, he's, he's just got this other polar bear to come down now. I don't know quite know where it is. It should be appearing any second. Where's the third polar bear? Where's he's giving up. Here he comes. That's he was toying with us all the time. It's Christmas. Alan Fox is very closely playing here to the end of the level. So what he's going to be looking for next is the smaller polar bear, and that's where if he can get on its back, then it's going to help him accelerate with a really large, angry looking polar bear. This gecko goes everywhere. What's this guy? I'm, I'm just stunned. I'm, I'm, I'm stunned. This guy is six years old and he is just carving through this level like a knife through the hottest of butter. <laughs> he's spun through that gate. That polar bear has given up. He's almost another check on there. A stunning display. Now you should get on the back of this little polar bear here and off it goes. It's off like a shot and it's moving away, accelerating fast. It's amazing how fast these small bear things can move, isn't it? Really? The thing is, the big polar bear is chasing the little polar bear. Well that's not normal is it? No you wouldn't think so, you'd think he would ease up a little bit on the little guy. <laughs> but this is amazing, it's very very close indeed. Alan Frost is keeping his step, come on Alan, the big final jump. He spins, he falls, he's done it, he's got the present. Alan Frost wins the challenge. Hey, he did it. Was it easy? Not really. No, it's a very hard game, isn't it? You're just very good, aren't you? Well, I tried my best. Yeah. So would you like to open your present really quickly? Mm -hmm. oh, let me put that bit. Oh, that's it. Good lad. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, what have we got here? What is that? A Star Wars figure. And who is it? Mm -hmm. Han Solo. Han Solo. And you know something else? You know that's not the only present you get. You know you get another one, don't you? A golden joystick. Yes, you do! Alan Frost is the winner of the Games Master Golden Joystick! Now well, Alan learns the basic skills of juggling two friends at the same time. We'll go to today's reviews. Well, here on Games Master, Christmas is a time normally associated with wasting huge amounts of money on video games. So a very Merry Wednesday to you all, and here's our top list of games for Christmas 97. Right, first up on my Christmas wish list is Jedi Knight, a game that you really can't set a foot wrong because it's sold. And once you have those sound effects, those graphics, and that kind of atmosphere, it's very, very entertaining. However, it's also nice to see that they've actually given some thought to the game behind all this atmospherics. The levels are designed well, the characters are designed well, and the story is actually an original take on the Star Wars story. All in all, a very, very fussy shooter. Now, my first choice above all other games this Christmas has to be Blade Runner. 
You can run it on a P90 and it'll look like you're running it on a P200 with 3D effects. It's truly incredible. Light sourcing and particle effects like you've never seen before. The game is totally slick, totally playable and an enjoyable experience all round. Well, I hope N64 owners have very small stockings because there's not going to be an awful lot of games to shove in them this year. One of them, however, is Goldeneye, a superb first-person shoot-em-up. The only game that could knock Shurok off that particular throne. Exciting, incredibly well-designed, beautiful to watch, and above all, totally engrossing. Final Fantasy VII is definitely another game to put in your Christmas stocking. I mean, it's an awesome experience. It sold three million copies in the first three days of release. Three million Japanese guys can't be wrong, let's face it. I mean, all right, the European market has never liked RPGs, but this one definitely breaks the mould. It's completely engrossing. The interactivity there is amazing. You've got graphics and some of the most incredible moments in computer game history all in one package. With 70 hours of gameplay, you're probably still going to be playing it this time next year anyway. You gotta do what? I gotta believe! I bet you never thought that a toasting frog and a small dog in a beanie hat was going to make your Christmas, but it's certainly going to be making mine. This has got to be the most unusual and while we're on the subject, the most warped video game in creation, but it's incredibly entertaining. A very simple concept, brilliantly executed, enormously creative, fun, great music, pretty graphics, the best game this year by an awful long way. Now, if you behave yourself this year, you will get one of those fantastic games as a Christmas present. I've been especially good, so I'm getting two. Uh, they're all part of today's Celebrity Challenge. I'm well known for my love of the great outdoors, and it's not unusual to see me, paddle in hand, engage in a sort of aquatic tomfoolery. My contestant tonight has a very similar talent. Heading into uncharted waters on the arcade game Rapid River, they'll be relying upon precision and stamina alone to guide them to the finishing line before the time will expire. Our special guest uh, today has done a plethora of wonderful things. Films, neighbours and tons of magazine features. A couple of which I keep underneath my bed. Please welcome Emma Harrison. Listen, I was the last person in the world that wanted you to stop dancing there, Emma. You are, you are mad for it, basically, aren't you? You're well up for it. have got loads of energy. You certainly do. You have got a reputation for being a bit of a wild one, though, haven't you? Um, You've done a couple of wild things, yeah, haven't you? Yeah, occasionally I just get really excited. Yeah. What's the maddest thing you've ever done? Oh. <laughs> well, once at a party, um, uh -huh. I had too much champagne. Yes. And I got up on a table and... <laughs> dance around and put my knickers on my head. <laughs> that, that might have been cold. Could have got a head cold. No, it, you know, it's silly. Perfectly and understandable. Now, you're also looking through the stuff that you've done. At, you are actually in Street Fighter, the movie. Yes, that's right. A quality film. <laughs> you always, now, obviously, you're working with Jean-Claude Van Damme. How, how, what was the closest you stood to Jean-Claude Van Damme? Mm, maybe you and me away. That but is. actually, I was at a party with him once. Uh -huh. And he invited me over for a drink. And you, and oh I yeah. said no. Don't tell me. Jumped up on the table. No, no, on no, the head. no, I said no. Cause I right. Just, I don't know, I wasn't really into him. No. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm not one of these people that just want to hang around because you're in a movie. You know? Right. I haven't been in one movie. I've never been in a movie at all. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Who cares? Exactly. As as you're a cool person. Who cares? I'm cool. <laughs> it's fantastic. Life is great. <laughs> Oh, it can only be Christmas. Um, at this point, before this conversation gets any further, we're going to carry on, but you're not allowed to see what's going to happen in the next couple of minutes. You have to take a commercial break. <laughs> yeah.
Welcome back to Games Master, uh, the Christmas special. We're having a Yabba Dabba Do Gale time here today because Emma Harrison has kindly joined us. She's jumped inside a large inflatable object. Derek Lynch is going to help me describe what she does with that object. Now, Derek, in her hands, Emma has two big, huge, enormous paddles. If you had your hands on those paddles, what would you be doing? Okay, now, keep a firm grip on the paddles and dip the left hand side of the paddle in to go left. And dip the right hand side of the paddle in, go right, uh -huh. and try to avoid the sides, and get a nice rhythm up. Uh, okay, that's the sense of everyone. We wish you all the best. You've got to get down to the bottom of the course before the time on the machine runs out. Emma can take any route she likes. She can basically do anything she likes on this show. Best of luck, Emma. Start paddling. Okay, not much background much to tell you about. You can see her paddle in front. Uh, Emma's using it. Um, on the screen there will appear instructions to go left or right, no will appear yet. You can see the time taken down to the centre top of the screen. You can see her left turn there and she's managed to turn that admirably. That's right, you set the pedal in to, to direct it. Come on Emma, turn right, right, Emma. That's, right. Right. that's good. Another right hander here, dig that paddle in Emma. Uh, yeah, I think she was letting the bank carry her nicely. Which is she going to go for? Big Canyon. I think I saw one of them when I was interviewing her. Uh, okay, 47 seconds left here. It's a big, deep, dark canyon here, That's Derek. It. Try and avoid the sides, Emma. Do the steering. That's right, keep the speed up. That's it, and it's quick zero. It's a quick zero. That time is taken away now. A bit more placid, calm waters there. <laughs> oh no, she's flipped right over. <laughs> but she's fine now, she's right to herself. 28 seconds to go, she's doing remarkably well, Derek. She's got a nice rhythm there, she's rocking the paddles, she's going, she's steering quite well. Oh, on the run. Okay, we've got another choice here, Derek. Volcano Land or the Land of the Nile. We're going to go for Volcano Land. I think this is a tougher one, isn't it, this side? It does, it looks like it, but come on. Get the pedal in. So let's keep the speed up. Lots of big, spotting gushes of lava as Emma sails by. Hardly surprising. Okay, we're going for another right hander. The time is still ticking down. 57, 56. It's not bad though. She's doing very well. Very well. Very consistent. She's just a, she's a remarkable woman. Most certainly. And <laughs> Oh look, there's a whirlpool, whirlpool coming up now. You really do have to paddle hard now. Really go for it. Go for it, man. Go for it. Emma, man. She's jumping up and down. Keep the rhythm going, Emma. Keep the rhythm going. Don't get tired. Keep going. Emma. No, she's going to make it. No, she's going to make it. 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 Come on, Emma. The time is taking down as well. Come on. Keep going. Just get out of it. Keep paddling. Use every last ounce of your energy. Rhythm. Remember the rhythm. Keep going. It looks fantastic from here, Emma. Oh, no. She's getting sucked down. Into the deep dark hole, Emma is disappearing. No! And what is this? She's into the secret section. It's the secret section. It's the secret finishing <laughs> <secret section. laughs> section. Emma Harrison has played the game almost by ESP. <laughs> <laughs> Emma, now, <laughs> now I actually said I thought you'd done the challenge by ESP because we'd never seen that screen before. The reason is, is that none of us have ever lost. I tell you what, that, that was such a hard ride. Yeah. I took the worst route. I went down the volcano and then in the whirlpool, and it was just too hard. It was. It was too hard. You should have seen what I was like up in the commentary box. <laughs> now, Emma, uh, you, you, you're going to be leaving us soon, aren't you? You've got to go back to yeah, Australia. In when is it? In a month or so. In January, yeah. Mm. Why? Because of visas. Yeah. Is it still a fact that if you marry a British guy, yeah. <laughs> you can stay in the country? Yeah, let's get married. We can sort that out. Hand on that bombshell. Please give it up again for today's special guest, Emma Harrison. Yeah. <laughs> well, I guess we've got a little bit of paperwork to attend to. And so, but even quicker than you can say, didn't he do a similar guy with Bushfield a couple of years ago? We're going to do today's feature. Going to war! Excellent! Yes, straight after Christmas, it'll be time to dust off your phony ID and head down to cinema for what promises to be the hardest special effects extravaganza in history. Starship Troopers, otherwise known as Humans Fight Bugs in Outer Space. Ah! 
Starship Troopers is directed by Dutch bloke Paul Verhoeven, responsible for Robocop, Total Recall and uh, Showgirls. Clearly he's a man in need of urgent medical attention. It's, it's a movie about Paradise Lost. The innocence of use is, is replaced by the, 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 the cruelty and the, the edge, hard edge uh, of, of war. Or in this case, the hard edge of war. As the young recruits in question are played by Denise Richards and Dina Mayer. While if you're aboard, you get Castro Van Dien and Patrick Muldoon. Boy meets girl. I don't want him to get in the way of uh, my career. Boy loses girl. She winds up falling for someone else. Boy gets another girl. I'm, you know, hopelessly devoted to him. And boy eventually gets back to the other girl. So we have that, uh, that love triangle thing going on. Yeah, yeah, blah, 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 blah. But you won't be going to Starship Troopers for any of that stuff. You'll be going for the spaceships, the explosions, and most of all, those armies of alien bugs. We can't show you the gruesome evidence at this time of day, but believe me, they are nasty. Starship Troopers opens on January the 2nd. Well, that's it for the Games Master Christmas special. Oh, we're all uh, roasting our chestnuts on an open fire. Wait, it sounds like a cue for a song. We all hope you have the most fantastic of Christmases. We hope that your presents are not cack, that your mum and dad don't have a big row in the middle and ruin it all, and that your granny doesn't bring her flatulence to the dinner table. Merry Christmas! We Merry Christmas, all. for Games Master, which returns to four on Tuesday, the 6th of January. Meanwhile, a blast from the past has Dan reliving his youth in Roseanne next on four.